Hello RCD readers and watchers, welcome to our YouTube channel. This is our first RCD article of 2023. This article is part 2 of our Feng Shui article. Last article we discussed the basic of Feng Shui and for evaluating the internal environment. In this article, we'll discuss the difference, difference between the Bagua map and using geomantic Mantic chart. Let's just start with saying I'm not a pro with this. The geomantic chart is something I followed years ago, a one-day course, and the Bagua map is something new I've learned on social media. First, I will discuss the Bagua map. The Bagua map is something that I've just found out. Um, a fellow YouTuber made a video about it, how to use it. I found it really informative. So I used her information to explain a little bit. So if you want to know more details how to do this, you can check her video. But I can disclaim her steps. So first step is Sketch out your layout. The second step is the five and nine squares. Third step is stand in the center of the room. Fourth step is use a compass, find the north direction. And fifth step is put the, in the compass direction on, on your paper. Now, um, she did use a cheat sheet. So if you want to try this, I would recommend checking the video and giving it a try. I really think this could help. Geomantic chart. The information used in this article is from Eva Wong's book, A Master Course in Feng Shui. She, dis she discussed the geomantic chart. I'm not sure which method is older, but this is the method I learned in a course. Now, in her book, she discussed the basics of Feng Shui and she has exercises so you can learn how to use this better. Now, the first step that she didn't say, but I would have to say, would be sketching the layout. Sketch the layout of your site and sketch the layout of your floor pan. If it has more than one, sketch every floor pan. Step two, evaluating external environment. Step three, evaluating internal environment. This was actually also a little bit discussed in part one of Feng Shui article. Step four, use the geomantic compass. Step five, setting up the geomantic chart. Step six, using the geomantic chart. And step seven, matching occupants to a house. Now, last step would have to be placing the furniture. Let me explain the geomantic chart. Step one, I already discussed sketching the layout. Step two is evaluating the external environment. This step is actually to choose a land with good Feng Shui. You can do this by finding the four protectors or creating them. You can also use a checklist what to avoid or what to seek out for. Now let's talk about the four animal protectors. When evaluating your external surroundings of the plot, you'll need to find protection. This means identifying the four protectors. These are named after the four guardians, guardian animals from Chinese mythology. Black tortoise, red raven, green dragon, and white tiger. This is done by examining the surrounding features of the plot. If, these, if the protection isn't visible, you can make sure it will be during the building of the house. Now, what is important? North side should be the back of the house. Mostly people use trees. South side should be the front of the house. If possible, create a slope in which you can see the house higher than the front entrance. 
what must you avoid? Now, in Suriname, try to not use a lot of land next to tall buildings. Avoid power plants and other utility buildings like EBS, SVM, um, Dela Sur. Avoid cemeteries. People think it doesn't really matter, but it does. Avoid buildings with irregular shapes. And what should you seek out? In Suriname, Suriname, try to choose plot of land next to schools, playgrounds, parks, and gardens, spiritual retreats, healing centers, flowing water streams, certain river and road, road patterns. Step three, evaluating internal environment. This step is actually to choose a building with good feng shui. You can do this by evaluating the shape of the building, evaluating the appearance of the building, and last, evaluating the floor plan. Now let's talk about the shape of the building. The shape of the building has three main things that are important. The stability, the balance, and the smoothness. Stability, we're talking about how stable is the house. What is the house made of? Balance, we're talking about stay away from irregular shapes. And smoothness, we're talking about no steep roofs. Appearance of the building. With appearance of the building, we're talking about what form does the building have. It's really important. As architect, we love to do this to create a design with a unique form. But you have to put um, think of the function of the building when you're choosing a form. It has to complement what the house of what the building is going to be used for. So think about that. Last is floor plan. Floor plan is actually already discussed in part one of Feng Shui article. So if you want to check it out, don't forget to check the YouTube link below. Step four, use the geomantic compass. A Chinese compass consisting of a wide thin disc of wood with a dry needle compass at the center. A line in the bowl indicates the north-south direction. Surrounding the bowl are 12 concentric rings each divided into segments and marked with either symbols or Chinese characters. How to use the compass. Step 1. Set the base plate of the compass on the ground floor parallel to the front wall of the house. Step 2. Rotate the capsule on the compass so that the needle aligns with the parallel bars on the face plate facing north. Step 3. Do not move the compass. Step four, to determine the facing direction of the building, look at where the line of the site lies in the 24 direction. Step five, setting up the geomantic chart. How to set up the geomantic chart? First, you have five steps. First step is find the year and cycle a house was built. You have the upper era, the middle error and the lower error. Each has three cycles. Step two, the earth base of the geometric chart. The geometric chart is a three by three grid of nine squares. This is the key to understanding the pattern of energy that flows within a building. The squares are called the nine palaces. The earth base stars represent energy associated with cycle in which a house was completed. Fill step three. Fill in the mountain stars of the geomantic chart. The mountain stars represent energy associated with the mountain direction, the back of the house. To determine the stars in the nine palaces, we must First, obtain the mountain direction of the building using geomantic chart. The path of the movement in the nine palaces are 
center is, the f is filled first, square in the lower right corner, then above it, and so on. Remember, the center is the earth base number and the mountain star described with the letter M. You need the year and the cycle in which the house is built and last, the fill to fill in the rest of the earth-based stars, follow the pathway of the nine palaces. Fourth step is fill in the facing stars of the geomantic chart. We will enter the facing stars in each square of the nine palaces. The facing stars represents energy associated with the facing direction of a house. We first need the facing direction of the house with the geomantic compass. And last step is orient the geomantic chart and identify the facing palace. Step six, using the geomantic chart. The chart is laid on the entire building and later floor by floor, and last, room by room. Your goal is to interpret the three numbers, earth base, facing star, mountain star of the nine palaces. The numbers tell us about the kinds of energy that flows in each area of the house. After this, we get to evaluate the usage of the spaces. Step seven, matching occupants to a house. This step is to match the occupants to the house and the bedrooms. For this, we need to identify the guardian star of each occupant. And last step, step eight, is placing the furniture. If you reach the end, thank you for watching. If you like this video, check part one of the basic Feng Shui uh, for evaluating internal environment. This was uh, part two of a series I posted years ago in 2017, uh, Client's Guide to Designing Their Home. And this was basic tips that you can avoid or seek out in different rooms of your house. So if you really want to know about that, you can go check it out. We talked about the floor pan, the interior, and architectural features. So check that video out. The link is below. If you want to learn more about the geometric chart, I would recommend checking Eva Wang's book, book, A Master Course in Feng Shui. And if you want to try the Bagua map, check out the link of the YouTuber. She'll explain a lot. She has more videos about rooms, about offices, and creating good feng shui. So see you next article and hit the like button and subscribe button and don't forget to share.